Hello, I am Milka Jagle, working as Assistant Professor in Department of Mechanical Engineering, Walchand Institute of Technology, Solapur. Today, we are going to learn on non-destructive testing methods too. Let's see. Learning outcome. At the end of the session, students will be able to select various non-destructive material testing methods and its significance. So the content for uh, today's session is non-destructive testing methods. So testing of materials. So why testing of material is needed is because so by testing of material we can assess the mechanical properties like tensile strength, hardness, toughness, resilience and so on. So that's why it is required to test the material. So next to determine the data. So it's very important to know the data of the material which are going to use for the purpose. Next one is to determine surface and subsurface defects. By using this uh, material, by using, uh, so the third point is to determine surface and subsurface defects. So most of the material has defects. Uh, whether they might be a uh, subsurface or surface defects to check the chemical composition of the material the testing of material is must and to determine the suitability of material for particular application okay non destructive testing so non destructive testing is nothing but it does not destroy the uh, material which we are going to test so it is the name itself indicates it will not destroy the specimen. So there are many uh, non-destructive tests such as dye penetrant test, ultrasonic test, uh, eddy current test and so on. So let's see today we are going to learn about non-destructive test. So uh, in this test actual components are uh, subjected to the test and 100% inspection is done. So whereas in destructive test the the specimen is no more use after the test is done because the specimen is destroyed whereas in uh, non destructive the specimen is not destroyed so, so just now we have discussed uh, the ability to detect the invisible subsurface defects uh, it maintains the high quality standards but provides valuable help in manufacturing methods so before going further so these are the test for the testing of materials that is dye penetrant test, magnetic particle test, ultrasonic test, radiography test in which x-ray and gamma rays or x-ray and gamma rays are used, so, eddy current test. Ultrasonic test. So it involves the time required by the ultrasonic vibrations to strike or to uh, penetrate into the material or the specimen and then reflect back from the defect or de reflect back to its the point from where they were introduced. Time is calculated if the defect is present then uh, this ultrasonic rays or ultrasonic waves will strike the specimen and reflect back. Strike the defect in the specimen and then reflect back if there is no uh, defect present it will strike to the other end of the specimen and reflect back. So the behavior of waves through such a cycle with respect to time is recorded on the CRO cathode ray oscilloscope screen. So by visual observation of the wave pattern so on the screen the presence of defects and the location of defects can be detected. So this method is very sensitive method and uh, very fine defects and discontinues can be found out in this method. This is very fast method for testing defects because the time for travel of ultrasonic waves is the order of microseconds. So there are two types of method of ultrasonic that is first is pulse echo method and uh, transmission method. So this is the setup for pulse echo method. If you see here this is a coaxial cable to the instrument this is the cord crystal which sends and pick up the ultrasonic waves. So if you see here the defect is present over here in this specimen. 
so when ultrasonic waves are inserted from this quartz crystal that will if there is no defect present the wave will strike the other end of the specimen and reflect back whereas if the specimen has the defect if you see this is the defect so when the rays are inserted that will penetrate into the defect and then reflect the time difference to strike and come back is calculated in this way we can find out the time and distance of the defect this is the pulse eco setup to find out the defect if you see this is the oscilloscope screen of ultrasonic tester here waves are reflected from the opposite side so this is the total distance from the test surface to the opposite surface whereas if the defect is present over here this is the total distance this distance is less as compared to this distance because here the defect is present whereas here there is no defect shown in this tester second is ultrasonic transmission setup so in this uh, the transducer is there whereas if flaw is present this is the pulsar where the transmission is given so if there is no defect present over here there is no any disturbance if the flaw is there here the rays are obstructed so this is how the defect is shown so advantages of ultrasonic testing it is sensitive to small discontinuous discontinuities both surface and subsurface depth of penetration for flaw detection or measurement is superior as compared to the other methods highly accurate the minimum part preparation is required electronic equipment provides instantaneous results time is also very less as uh, in microseconds then detailed images can be produced with automated system and has the other uses such as thickness measurement etc radiography this method is used to detect the flaws in the components manufactured by casting welding forging and etc so this math method the components to be examined is exposed to the radiations of short wavelength so this is the schematic diagram of radiograph this is the defect this is the film the radiograph is produced x ray from uh, x ray tube or a radium uh, capsule is there it produces x rays or gamma rays so this is the porosity or a hole or a defect this is our specimen so a film is radiograph is uh, produced so this is in this way the defect is shown in the radiograph a photograph or a film is uh, kept and then that will produce a radiograph which indicates the exact location of the defect so as we have seen the these radiation penetrate through the components and they are absorbed by the material the penetrating ability of these radiations depend upon the wavelength and the absorbing absorbing power of the material amount of radiations emerging from the opposite side of the material can be recorded and observed the variations can be detected so the recording is usually done by placing a film sensitive to radiation in a cassette at the end of the object so as we have seen the film is present after developing a film it shows a picture of light and dark areas dark areas representing the regions of low density such as holes porosity cracks and etc the film is called xerograph eddy current testing in alternating current is brought near a metallic specimen eddy currents are developed due to electromagnetic induction the eddy currents are developed so eddy current depends upon the magnitude of eddy current depends upon uh, frequency of alternating current flowing through the coil electromagnetic permeability shape of the specimen the relative position of the coil and specimen the amount and type of the defect in the specimen so uh, variation in any one of the above factor would result in the variation of the induced current so the change in the eddy current will change the magnetic impedance of the specimen or a component which is converted to voltage 
and observed on a voltmeter. So these are the types of coils, the absolute coils and differential coils. Uh, this in this the standard specimen is surrounded by one coil and the specimen under test is surrounded by the another. So when the output of two coils is zero, the specimen under test is similar to standard specimen, otherwise they are different. So as we have seen the coil are flat or cylindrical, high frequency of AC current are used to detect the flaws on the surface just below the surface. These are the advantages, they are very fast, no direct electrical contact is needed, that can be, uh, they can be automated, low cost, no final cleanup is required, uh, the, it is a portable equipment and applicable to both ferrous as well as non-ferrous alloys. So these are the references, the book by uh, Kodgire and the book by B.K. Agarwal. Thank you.